Hi, Namaste. Let us discuss about vibrant villages program of Narendra Modi government, which is very ambitious as well as very important in order to ensure that there has been a development even in the border regions, especially in the border villages where there is lack of employability, lack of economic opportunity, where they feel they are separated from the mainland and lack of tourism opportunities and then the lack of opportunities which is pushing them towards out migration. Let us understand why this is important in this conjuncture and what was the policy for past 70 years. Let us listen to the, the then Defence Minister of Government of India in 2013, the AK Antony speaks something about the uh, development in the border region. Let's listen. Independent India, many years as a policy on border, the best defense is not to develop the border. Undeveloped developed border is more safe than developed border. So many years there was no construction of roads, airfields, nothing in the border areas. By that time, China continued to develop their infrastructure in the border areas. So as a result, now, they have gone ahead of us. Compared to us, infrastructure-wise, capability-wise, in the border areas, they are ahead. I admit that. It's a part of history. Okay. In 2020, uh, 2013, when A.K. Antony was uh, talking in the parliament, he said few things which are very important. That since independence, India has followed the strategy of defensive-offensive. That means, which means, we are not building anything in the border region. We are not doing anything. We are not doing infrastructure. We are not building good roads. We are not building airfields. We are not um, uh, thinking of ensuring the connectivity. For the simple reason, the understanding was, if you build a beautiful road and very good connectivity in the border region, it will help the China to enter India very easily. It will take its tanks to the New Delhi. That was the policy. That was the defensive and most, most, what do you say, uh, disappointing. Not just the defensive, but also the defensive policy. Because whenever there was a need for the moment or otherwise, whenever the personnel required the backing from the team, the infrastructure would have been very difficult and it would have taken days to reach to them. By them, Many things would have happened. Many grave things would have happened. That's why China was able to easily enter some of the regions or border regions of India and ensure that salami slicing strategy is being followed for years. And it was it was actually the China which is successfully built very good road connectivity, ports, uh, not ports, um, airfields. Then they have the artificial villages so that their moments would be very quick. Whereas in India's case, till 2014, we were still thinking whether to develop something in the regions of Indochina border. We were thinking, let us not build anything. Let us not waste the money. It will help the China to enter India. Rather than, rather than increasing your abilities, you are thinking about opposition's or opponent's ability. And that is the saddest part in India's developmental history, especially in the border development history of India. So, India has nine states which shares the border with the countries like Pakistan, Bangladesh, Myanmar, China, Nepal, Bhutan, etc. etc. Land boundary that is from here to here, it is 15,106 kilometers. Then the sea boundary the water boundary that we call 7,516 kilometers. That is the border of India. Now, the Subramanya Jaishankar says that since 2014, we have given a special emphasis because of the strategic reasons. One is strategic, military. Then there is also a possibility of the people who were being migrated, who are being affected by the intrusions or shellings or uh, drug trafficking, etc., etc., they were being 
affected therefore the peace and stability was or tranquility was not possible in that region for which india since 2014 the the now foreign minister external affairs minister subramanian jayashankar says they gave the emphasis on fencing massive road building he is quoting see uh, uh, from 2014 to 22 6806 kilometers we have seen very beautiful passes with very beautiful tunnels being constructed and built uh, that is with the scale and speed then we have 25 airfields which is which are capable of attacking the china at any point of time till then we had rarely one or two air bases or let's say there was no active all weather air bases in the indo china border that was lacking in india's developmental story the important facet again 69 bridges bridges becomes very important factor between uh, see whenever there is a river or whenever there is some sort of uh, 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 what do you say passes or kind of a, um, a terrain where the bridges becomes very imminent factor without which reaching out or connecting will become very difficult therefore border area management or border area development includes building the bridges building the tunnels building beautiful roads airfields everything and fencing all such things which will not just secure india also give emphasis towards if the enemy is trying to attack you you will be able to retaliate him immediately that is that should be the strategy so let us understand what is vibrant villages program see two things we are discussing a that strengthening our border infrastructure in one hand on one hand we are uh, talking about strengthening the infra of border on the other front we are also talking not just as a border as an entity we are also talking as the villages there are thousands of villages which are being affected which are actually being isolated or every now and then they feel threatened therefore india's role or indian government's role becomes very important to develop them in order to ensure that strategic areas are being developed people are being benefited economic prosperity or vibrantism has been brought then the tourism potentials have been uplifted finally finally see when we say defense it is also about intelligence these are the people who give us the first hand information about the enemy movement troop movement and they also have the access across the border therefore people to people intelligence will be easy if you have the strong villages at your border and they are not inclining towards your enemy but inclining towards our own country therefore they will be strong enough to give us the crucial information during the strategic hours or tactical hours so what is this vibrant villages program it's a most ambitious program of narendra modi government so it was actually announced in 2020 22 23 centrally sponsored central means completely funded by central government to enhance the living standards of residents no need to explain anything just look at the points use them whenever it is required then the development improving the quality of life again the same thing living standards like education health etc etc quality of life also includes the economic opportunities then addressing the out migration out migration because of the tensions always there will be tensions so they think that we should move away from this border region to get better and secured opportunities therefore to reduce that we have to have a very beautiful and stable infrastructure at the border connectivity at the border so one of the key feature is that providing 4g 4g services till now most of the times whenever there will be tensions the connectivity will be cut off therefore if you are giving them the opportunity on par with any other indians they will also have the opportunity of economic prosperity and opportunities anyhow the scheme will cover the border regions of five states and 2962 border villages which are the state hp uk ap sikkim ladakh look at those states in the map once if you want so hp uttarakhand then you have arunachal pradesh sikkim so these are the five states we are talking about then uh, 
action plans in collaboration with village panchayat see action even if it is a centrally sponsored it will have or it will go and implement the plans at the village panchayati level therefore it will be more effective not that it is a top up approach it will be a bottom up approach then it won't be overlapping so one of the key features or key constraint for any of the development is overlapping of the schemes or programs now the border area development is being held for many years that will be kept separately and this will be kept and hub and spoke model this will be worked out in a hub and spoke model what is hub and spoke one hub will be there the infrastructure development out of which the spokes will go skill development education healthcare facility financial literacy banking facility tourism cultural etc 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 from one hub many spokes will go it will create livelihood opportunities to agriculture skill development horticulture tourism cultural etc etc entrepreneurship because we are also looking forward for the development in those regions otherwise they will feel feel isolated or left out that should not happen what was happening for 70 years must not be repeated again program also seeks to enhance road connectivity the key feature of border development is road connectivity if you have very beautiful connectivity within days or say within hours you can have a reinforcement of forces when there is a threat to our borders that is one of the key features also the food medicine during the natural calamities Uh, during the avalanches himalayan terrains etc etc we need very good road connectivity only then we will be able to get connected immediately easily rural infrastructure without rural infrastructure village development will be impossible infrastructure includes hospital etc etc entrepreneurship tourism facility energy renewable and both traditional then the television then telecom telecom is 4g as i said and all these things will be monitored under pm gati shakti PM Gati Shakti, sir and madam. What is this PM Gati Shakti? There is a portal. This plan was implemented in 2021 with 100 lakh crore project, uh, holistic infrastructure, and speed. Speed is Gati and power is Shakti. Both power and speed will work hand in hand in order to achieve the 100 lakh crore project for India's overall development. Now. under this pm gati shakti the vibrant village just program will be implemented anyhow gati shakti includes uh, somewhere road railway airport transmission renewable energy capacity will be increased okay solar etc etc and 4g connectivity it is key at the heart of uh, pm gati shakti okay anyhow coming back to this now it comes under home ministry as we discussed therefore home minister is there now he has taken the meeting vibrant villages program now it was launched in 22 23 okay now the developments are such that now they have decided for that was already there but now in the meeting what has been discussed is all round development of the border villages villages at the heart which villages five states more than 2009 2962 villages okay so all around development of the border villages then the heart at the heart is local people increase their connectivity uh, with village to prevent the migration okay then 130 uh, under this program already 136 border villages are being provided connectivity through 113 all weather road all weather is any time you are able to access you are able to walk through you are able to travel the project is 2420 crores home ministry said and 4g network sir sir and madam we have taken this internet for granted because we stay in some of the metropolitan cities or at least securely inside the country but whereas in the border regions most of the times connectivity especially the telecom connectivity becomes very difficult for them and 4g probably it is their dreams now under this program these villages will also get 4g what a beautiful thing then uh, gati shakti portal then 4000 uh, service delivery now the home minister says local cultural and handicraft products through cooperatives he is also the minister of cooperatives he was therefore he is also trying to push through cooperative movement we can bring about a change or revolution even in the border villages then finally he says that capf and others should 
encourage or facilitate the people to use their hospitals already established infrastructure schools etc etc the heart another fact is that along with 4g network they are not giving the 4g network just to play pubg or something okay the idea is to ensure that they will also brought under financial inclusion what is financial inclusion a yeah, financial literacy then they are bringing under banking net or the financial services net so that it will be easy for them to take a loan uh, have financial transactions then they can plan for uh, entrepreneurship building some buildings for the tourism purpose they can pull up uh, most of the things using the economic activity then how how with the traditional idea of indian postal banks all across the villages therefore the vibrant villages program will be successful with these kind of initiatives now we must understand that for immediately after independence maybe for 70 years the idea was defensive offensive depressing disappointing saying that we will not develop just because china will enter any time therefore we have to be very rugged and our terrain should be like this only on the other hand china took this advantage and developed in the border region now they are in the advantageous position this was stating around 2020 uh, 2013 in the house parliament now the situation is being changed that is what subramanya jayashankar says that we are able to build uh, around 6800 Uh, sorry 6806 kilometers of road connectivity through which this infrastructure projects we are also developing or border regions are being developed on par with china now not just the borders as such but also villages must also be taken into consideration when we think of the villages rural development will be possible when we say so also the people will also get the fruits of that development so with vibrant villages program it has to be successful only then the isolation or let's say left out feeling of the border region people will be dealt with very positively therefore this scheme with infrastructure building with connectivity building also bringing about 4g connectivity as of now with huge scale and also at uh, one scale also with speed both the things if if it is done in next 4 5 years then those regions will also be developed very very prosperously the economic benefits and the fruits will also be enjoyed by the people where the migration may get reduced also people cross the world or from india can also go to those region looking for the tourism opportunities that is also the spiritual centers see this this region the border regions are also the spiritual dharmic centers then we have very beautiful himalayan terrains uh, rivers and uh, many other aspects which are natural cultural and etc etc therefore it is also an hub of tourism for which india has to take care by building the necessary infrastructure the final point is with this program also not just the strategic necessities are being built people centric bottom up developmental plan or model will also be implemented effectively at the same time at the same time with this intelligence possibility can also be pushed ahead finally we are seeing some of the movements in ladakh and uh, elsewhere also in the border regions their inclination some of the people's inclination towards other country can also be reduced with the idea of common agenda of prosperity development and bringing about a peace this can be possible with the revolution of such schemes for example border area development uh, bro border road organizations then the vibrant villages program such programs can bring in or uh, bring in, bring about a transformation in the lives and livelihood of the people who are residing at the border region hope this video was useful thank you for watching this is shreyank aisra nade dhanyawad jai hind namaste